and this is going to be the trend for a while and the number nine is involved hi guys and welcome back to the channel so today we are going to be taking a look at the speedy b flight controller this is all in one flight controller and this is pretty cool actually very cool because it keeps it keeps along with the trend plus adding some extra features so let's go ahead and talk about this guy so i don't know if you guys have seen it before a lot of people have already reviewed these uh this thing has a built-in uh basically i think it's a hm10 or hm11 module which is a bluetooth 4.0 the ble modules and what this does is allows you to connect completely to it through Bluetooth and use your phone to access all the functions of Betaflight, which is super awesome. Now that's just one thing that's super awesome. The second thing what I really, really, really love about this, and this is gonna be the trend for a while, and the number nine is involved, which is a nine volt regulator. Now the nine volt regulator has been you know, the first company that I believe to introduce it was the Maytag, was Maytag. And it was in the older Maytag F405. It was uh, the one with the super sensitive gyro. They were probably a little bit too far ahead of their time. However, the thing with that one, it had beautiful feed, but it had this annoying yaw twitch. And it's because it was using a sensitive gyro. The noise from the ESCs were just touching that gyro and making all kinds of problems. And um, ever since, no one really did. And I think the first one to come out after them was Dal RC. Uh, which is with the Dell RC F405 flight controller and the Dell RC uh, all-in-one flight controller, which both have the 9-volt regulator. So does this one here. So this one not only has the 9-volt regulator, it's also an all-in-one flight controller. It has an F405 microcontroller unit, which is an F4 processor. And it has that Bluetooth functionality built in, which is super, super, super awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board here. Now, if we take a look here, this is where your battery would connect, and we have the arrow up here, so it would be connected like so. So that's super awesome, super simple. And then we have S1, which is the motor orientation. In beta flight, it's one, two, three, four. So let's just double check this. So here's the signal, and here's the uh, power for your ESC. And uh, this one, for some reason, had some solder on it. I don't know why, but here's S2. This is motor two, correct, power, correct. S3, correct, okay, S4, correct. USB's on the left, beautiful, perfect, awesome. Now, uh, this thing, uh, well, I highly recommend from now on. Used to, I used to always say, duh, there's never need to ground your ESC signal because anyways, the whole thing is grounded. But believe it or not, there, it does create issues actually. I've seen it here on my four motor testing setup and I'd highly recommend what you do is you take the signal from your ESC, the, the signal ground, and you wrap it with the ground of the power of the ESC and ground them in the same place or just find somewhere else to do that. It's very important that you ground them. You, you have no idea what kind of issues. I'm still working on the video to show you a, bl a bunch of examples of the difference between grounding and not grounding your ESCs. And I'm still trying to figure out what is really going on through the oscilloscope testing. So that's out of the way, let's continue on. All right, so here we have SCL and SDA. So if you wanted to connect to GPS, you could totally do that. Here we have our, for our LED setup. So here's the power for the LED, five volt ground, and here's a signal which controls the colors of the LED, preferably the RGB LEDs. And if we take a look here, we have S bus, 4.5 volt. This is kind of like the Maytag style in a ground. And here we have, I think it says RSSI, as you can tell right there, this is RSSI, 3.3 volt and RX2. Okay, so first thing I could tell you right off the bat, it does not have ESC telemetry pads, but to be honest, it's really useless. Um, I find it, I, I've connected it, I've actually connected it on two quads, and both of those quads keep burning motors. Isn't that strange? I don't know what the hell's wrong. Maybe I did something wrong, but I don't think I really did do anything wrong, to be honest. So I try to avoid ESC telemetry now for some reason. So let's take a look at this bottom side here. So here we have S5 and S7, and I believe those are motor five and seven here. And you even have S6, which is motor six. And I, I truly believe that's correct, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's up to seven motor input. That's pretty nice. Okay, that's cool. And then we have here, we have a TX3 and we have an RX3. So that's UART3 right there. And then if we take a look down here, we have buzzer minus five volt. So if you wanted a buzzer, you would connect the power of the buzzer here and then the ground of the buzzer right there. All right, so that's awesome. Here we have another ground, five volt V in. 
So ground 5 volt V in, this is where I would personally connect my camera. So I'd give it ground 5 volt and the video in, this is where the camera would go in, because V in would go here, and then it would go through this OSD, and then it'll pop out to the V out right here. And as you can tell here, this is super awesome. They also gave you another ground, 9 volt, in a video out. So this is for the VTX. This is that, that 9, oh, I love this 9 volt regulator. And you guys, this is going to be the trend. I mean, from now on, personally, when I go to find like an all one flight controller or flight controller, I will be looking for that 9 volt regulator because it makes all of the difference. Now, it gives you beautiful feed, but that doesn't mean it keeps your quad clean. Uh, you still have to clean it out if it's doing some weird stuff and if it has some noise because you can burn other components in here and everywhere else. But overall, you'll have a beautiful video feed, like a super awesome video feed. So that's pretty cool. So 9 volt right there for the VTX and video out is for the yellow wire of the VTX. And here we have TX1 and RX1, which is UR1. And here's motor 6 input right there, you can tell. So overall, this board's pretty nice setup. I mean, it's very clean, pretty thick. Uh, it does have nice filtration on board. And uh, this is, I believe this is the antenna for the Bluetooth module. And as I know is once you arm, it actually disconnects the module so it doesn't have any kind of interference or ruin anything in there. And we do have current sensor right there and we have a TVS diode, that's pretty nice. Um, and we do have a boot button, which is a must to be honest. It's better than a bridge button. And uh, overall, you know, this board looks very nice. It's very well priced. Um, it's not like, you know, they're saying, oh, it's hundred dollars or something. Nope, it's, it's very well priced, plus, you know, huge props for the application they created. Absolutely phenomenal. And, um, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just glad. Uh, if anyone's really just starting out right now and got this, you, you have no idea how much time you've saved on your ass uh, with such a little awesome flight controller, on flight controller. So we're going to be testing this very soon. I think I'll be building this before the KISS, uh, the iFlight KISS flight controller because uh, I really want to try this. And um, maybe do some kind of a nice budget newbie friendly build uh, where it has a lot of space, it flies beautiful, and the motors are good and budgety and cheap, and uh, overall a nice performing, nice performing budget quadcopter. This makes a lot of sense to me since uh, it's going to be very newbie friendly here. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys like this content, please consider joining my Patreon. It'll help this channel keep growing and it'll keep, you know, it'll stay alive. And um, yeah, and that's it, guys. So I'll leave a link to everything down below. Go ahead and check them out. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.